asked FPL experts for their best transfers for game week four, and this is what they came up with. And the first expert that I consulted for transfer targets for game week four was FPL Matt Day. If you want to kind of have the chance to be involved in these videos in the future, go over to my Twitter at FPL Tom underscore. Follow me there. And next time I put a tweet out asking for experts opinions, get yourself involved if you want to be included in these videos. If you want to go and check out any of the experts included in today's video, a link to all their Twitter and YouTube will be in the description of today's video as well. Starting off with our first player pick and it is James Madison a player I am looking to get into my own team as well for game week four for so this one gets the FPL Tom seal of approval 7.6 million only 16% owned and as you can see the game week four and five fixtures are sublime to be honest ladies and gentlemen Burnley are a team I'm potentially looking to target they haven't started the season too well got ripped apart by Villa at the weekend Sheffield United as well conceding lots of opportunities against Manchester City and other kind of lesser teams like Nottingham Forest as well. So I definitely think they're a team we want to be targeting as well. Spurs have looked phenomenal as well over the kind of opening three game weeks and a big part of that has been James Madison as well. As you can see, one goal, two assists, good underlying data as well to go with that and good expected points over the next kind of three game weeks. In terms of the longer term fixtures, game week six and seven are a little bit difficult with Arsenal away and then Liverpool at home. So not the greatest, but then after that it is Luton, Fulham and Crystal Palace. So he is a very good kind of long term pick as well. You just have to kind of have a contingency plan for game week six and game week seven. I definitely think there's still time to jump on this James Mad Madison bandwagon as well. A lot of us are going to be looking to get rid of Martinelli, you know, other players like that. Maybe you want Saka out as well. Potentially Salah is one player that I'm looking to downgrade. I don't think he's been exceptional. Maybe looking to upgrade Matoma as well with Brighton's fixtures turning. This for me would be the ideal replacement. Good short-term fixtures. Make sure you have a plan in game week six or seven. But with Madison, I think you could easily play him in those two games as Arsenal and Liverpool haven't looked bright either. But then again, after that, the fixtures are back to being absolutely juicy for a player who's going to be on free kicks and corners as well and is the key, the kind of the heartbeat of that Spurs team. I think this is a great suggestion and gets the FPL Tom seal of approval. Continuing with the Spurs theme, our next expert, FPL Cam, has recommended a doji. Still only 6.3% owned, so would be technically classed as a differential as he is under 10% owned. Picked up an assist this weekend. And again, another player who is massively impressive with me on the eye test. I bought him in this week as my Gabriel replacement. Very happy that I did so. Picked up 12 points, which was amazing. Playing kind of in this inverted fullback role, which is really suiting his kind of game and his play style. If you look at his heat map as well, it is exceptional. I'm going to put the heat map on screen right now. Put that there and then you guys can see that as well. The positions that he's getting into are phenomenal for a 4.6 now million defender had a price rise i think the other night which is a little bit disappointing if you didn't quite you know have the budget to potentially go for him but is still at a bargain bottom price very similar with the james madison the fixtures are good in the short term game week six and seven is the issue that you are going to potentially come into but if you already own rico henry cash chilwell these players wrote ex well Another good one as well, Estupinian. All these players rotate extremely well with a doji. So maybe if you kept Gabriel hoping he was going to play this week, he would be my go-to replacement. The next two fixtures are great. As you can see with him as well, expected good points over the next few weeks. Good fixtures. Just again, make sure you have that contingency plan. So again, this one is getting the FPL Tom seal of approval. Another player who is in my team and I'm very happy to have him. The only thing to consider is just to make sure for Postacog Glue's press conference as he did go off injured but kind of walked off rather than like you know had to be stretched or taken off by the medical team he did walk off so hopefully it was just like a minor knock and they were just taking him off as a precautionary but yeah just keep an eye out on that on Thursday Friday make sure that he's fully fit before bringing him in I don't think he's going to see another price rise in the next few days so you I think you definitely can hold and wait and make sure that he is fully fit but like I said this one gets the seal of approval as well Moving swiftly on to our next experts pick, and it is Nicholas Jackson. Very similar to Adoji, I do have this man in my team. Had him in for his game week three kind of seven pointer against Luton. Could have been so much more. 
as we've kind of been saying with this man over the opening couple of game weeks, accumulating a lot of good underlying data. But where are the points, ladies and gentlemen? Where are the points for this man? As you can see with that expected data, like I said, 2.46 for XG, even 0.53 for a forward in terms of expected assists is kind of, you know, really, really good and what we want to be seeing. Very similar to kind of Spurs. The fixtures for the next two are brilliant for Chelsea, Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth. I've actually been super impressed with Nottingham Forest performances that they've been putting in over the past couple of weeks against Arsenal and against uh, Manchester United at the weekend as well should have potentially come away with a draw very unfortunate in that one to be honest but I think they'll definitely give Chelsea a game as they don't look convincing Chelsea I know they beat Luton quite comfortably but you kind of expect that result to be honest Jackson is one of those players who for me personally isn't quite passing my eye test I watched the full game on Friday night and oh my I was watching it with my dad and we were just kind of like in pain watching this man at times the touch the passing ability, it just wasn't quite there. It's like, I don't like owning this man, if you know what I mean. The, the, the eye test for me is just not passing it. Yes, he's getting into these positions and putting up the underlying data, so you'd hope that something does come of it. And there isn't too many competition for places amongst kind of the Chelsea forwards at the moment. So I definitely think he's going to start. But he is a very frustrating player to own. I can see him going blank in the next two. Then when you look to sell him in game week six for Aston Villa, he then goes and scores. He could be a very big FPL troll this season. But with the fixtures, with the data, I do think that you do have to go and target this man if you are looking for a potential forward replacement. So it's going to get the FPL Tom seal of approval. He's in my team as well. I do think he is one of the better forward options. He's putting up the data. He's just not quite passing my personal eye test. Continuing with the Chelsea theme, our next expert FPL Prem tipster has recommended Raheem Sterling. I know he's going to start becoming a very popular asset after his haul in game week three. Again, like I said, I watched the game on Friday night with my dad. My dad's had him in since his wildcard and he was delighted with Raheem Sterling's performance. I definitely think he's a player who massively passes the eye test. I think he's good for minutes as well. I think with the performances that he's putting in, he seems to be Poch's kind of one of his favorite players and one of the first names that we do see on the team sheet. Under 10% owned as well, so does technically class as a differential. Obviously, his performance against Luton was out outstanding two goals one assist we know this man has got the capabilities we've seen this over the past few years at Manchester City hitting 200 plus points in three consecutive seasons so he's definitely got it in his locker he's at a dirt kind of bottom price point and with a lot of us kind of looking to move our Martinelli's I'm a Thomas on I do think this man does offer a great opportunity to do that still at a very small price point still very low owned as well so he potentially could have a huge explosion in points and explosion for your rank as well like we spoke about the next two fixtures are exceptional for Chelsea as well definitely something you want to be targeting kind of after that Aston Villa at home isn't great but then Fulham and Burnley another two really good fixtures but I'd probably still see Sterling playing it's a home fixture as well for Chelsea so you would have to back them as well as you can see good expected points over that good uh, period of time with the fixtures four to six 18.3 points expected for him and again he he did pass the eye test for me personally in my own team it's going to be a toss-up between taking Salah out for Sterling or James Madison it's which one I kind of just want to go for I'm kind of my heart's leaning a little bit more towards James Madison I've had him in the past I know what that man's about Sterling does have that kind of like trap feel about him I don't know why I don't really want triple Chelsea either because I wasn't overly impressed with their performance against Luton. and I definitely think better teams, better organized teams can exploit their weaknesses and potentially limit players like Sterling and Jackson. So I am slightly leaning towards more to Madison. Let me know in the comment section which way where you're potentially thinking, Madison or Sterling. Let me know down in the comment section below and let's move on to our next experts pick. As you can tell, Chelsea did have quite a good performance at the weekend with a lot of the experts recommending Chelsea players. This is the final one, I do promise, and it does come from All About FPL. He has recommended that you do go for Gusto. 4.1 million, obviously picked up two assists in the game against Luton. Again, looked very good, to be honest. 4.1 million, 8% owned, so again, a very good differential. But my only concern with this one is I would go for Ben Chilwell. I just think the expected goals involved, he's a lot higher than even in that Luton game. I think he just gets in more attacking positions as well. So he is an asset that I 
prefer to be honest if i have the budget i would be recommending going for chilwell he is my defender i wouldn't necessarily def kind of uh, support the argument of going for a double up as well with that Chelsea defence. They did look wobbly at times and I think better teams, not Nottingham Forest being one of those better teams, like I said earlier in the video, very impressive against uh, their opening kind of free fixtures especially the ones against Manchester United and Arsenal. I can see them potentially scoring against uh, Chelsea as well. So I'm not 100% convinced it's worth going for this double up. Yes, the fixtures are good. Yes, he's at a bargain bottom price. But I think if I was to go for a Chelsea asset, I would be going Ben Chilwell and I would avoid going for the double up. So I'm not going to give this one the seal of approval. I think if you can't afford potentially going for Chilwell, I think Gusto is a great option. But I think a lot of people have already got Ben Chilwell, so I would not be recommending going for that double up. Keep away from kind of doubling up on a defence that hasn't looked amazing. Yes, I know they kept a clean sheet against Luton, but you would be hoping that anyway. I think Forrest will give them a tougher test, especially Villa as well. So I don't expect clean sheets to be kind of forthcoming with that Chelsea back line. And our final expert of today's video is not so template FPL. He makes some great differential content on YouTube, so go and check him out after this video. He has recommended Diaby as his potential player that he would be looking to bring in to his side for game week four. And for me, I'm sorry, mate. I know we're good friends, but I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. I'm always kind of playing towards players' fixtures and Aston Villa's fixtures over the next couple aren't amazing. Liverpool, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, Brighton. Not a great kind of four. After that in game week eight, that's where I'm potentially looking to target some Villa players is around that game week eight period because it's Wolves, West Ham, Luton. That's the period that I would potentially be looking to get on the Aston Villa hype train. I can fully understand why he's recommended Diaby. He is a fantastic asset. Two goals, one assist, and has looked extremely bright over kind of the opening three game weeks for Aston Villa. I think he is definitely an asset that I want to get in my team. It's just not now. I think it's a little bit later in game week eight because those fixtures aren't great. Liverpool, again, weren't an amazing team. Chelsea don't look amazing. Brighton obviously had kind of a dud performance this week. Crystal Palace as well are up there for XG conceded. So one of the better defences in the league. So I definitely think with Villa also having European football starting to kick in, I think there's going to be a little bit more rotation within that side. So I don't kind of get why... I would potentially go for Diaby, so it's not going to get the seal of approval. I can understand the kind of thought process, but for me personally, I think there are better assets to go for around this price point, as I'm always kind of a manager who likes to play the fixtures rather than form. Those were our kind of six picks from FPL experts. If you did like today's video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Go check out all the experts included, as they all make amazing content over on Twitter or YouTube. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the rest of your day.